All right, hello. Today is Monday, August 29th, 2016, and I'm starting a live broadcast. I announced everywhere, but you know, it's end of August, people are busy, busy preparing for things. Uh, today broadcast is going to be about emergency preparedness and what you do, what the light workers should do, can do, and in, in, in case of global economic collapse. Right. Um, I understand that the topic is scary and it's not as fun as aliens, but it involves aliens and you just get used to it, learn your, do your homework, get used to it, and then come back to life. So basically the previous messages were from Al and others that uh, the global eco economic collapse is planned by them, for, by L, uh, for 2027, 11 years from now. Um, and a couple days ago, Takur said that, no, it looks like um, it might be sooner. I shouldn't say when, how much sooner, but we assume, I assume it's maybe five years from now. So you have five years to prepare. And my main message is to prepare, I mean, do Reiki, meditation, channeling, build your spirit body, get used to the idea of coming troubles and become stronger spiritually. I don't mean that you have to like all these five years be panicking and uh, uh, block block the bliss. Be happy now and be happy then. That's another big message. You know, even when things happen and when people are dying, uh, it's not the, the excuse to to be depressed. It's not, not at all. You will find if it happens, if it happens, it's not guaranteed. If it happens, at the chances are known. Like we expected global collapse four years ago in 2012. So we already went through this mental work, emotional work, and kind of got used to that idea. And by the time it was expected, I don't think we were that that said, we were waiting with anticipation, but I don't think we even practically prepared. We like we stock stuff up, but we like lived our lives. On this in December 2012, we lived our lives normally. We maybe had parties. We didn't really. I didn't. We didn't even look at the clock. And maybe every hour at that moment, we were thinking, hmm, why didn't things change yet? Why nothing has changed? And soon we realized did change, but it was so subtle, right? So subtle. Um, so you can't miss it. You, it, it will unlikely be a single event, like, or whatever, whatever. No, it was not 11. It was um, the event of Twin Towers. I, I don't remember the date. September 11, 9-11. It was 9-11. So, um, it, it may be a single event, but there will be still steps. I'm not talking only to myself. There is my shadow here. So we're together, right? Um, smile. Smile. Uh, breathe. Keep breathing. It's an illusion. And be strong. And uplift, uplift the energy. Stay in higher vibrations. Go down and then lift it up. Be a heavy lifter of your sadness, leave the weight of sadness of others, leave the whole humanity. That's the main um, duty for you, main goal. You will be there to hold the high vibration. Right now, high vibration is held by, by light workers and dolphins. And when things go down, if they go down, you will be holding, and dolphins, you will be holding that high vibration. And when their lower vibration fall apart, the high vibration will be much easier to hold. And you will form a grid, 
a grid, a network of high vibration around the globe, and it will be a major wave of ascension. Understand, when things go down, actually things go up. Uh, we remember Russian Revolution and Russian big war, the, the World War II. Things went really down and things went really up. There was a countrywide upliftment of the spirit. It's, it's hard to believe, but it was. It was very bad and at the same time the spirit went up. And you can rationally explain that, but you can also explain it just by miracle. There is some metaphysical law which uplifts the spirit. Because people who are not in the know, who are lost, their vibration becomes less synchronized. They don't interfere with coherent high vibration from light workers. Now, that is, the whole world is immersed in brainwashing, right? The brainwashing is so strong. There is a television which creates the wave, synchronized wave of fear and anger. Fear and anger. Combine fear and anger. The circle is spinning. The wheels of brainwashing are spinning fast. And when their electricity goes down, that wheel will stop, the, so the synchronicity will be lost very fast. Synchronicity and synchronization, it's more like synchronization will be lost very fast. And when the global madness stops, then there will be a possibility for global... Uh, what's the opposite of madness? Uh, peace, balance, union. Union. Um, Upliftment, upliftment, ascension, the, the wave of ascension, the wave of high spirit, four-dimensional spirit, the unity. So you have time to meditate, to reconnect to the greed, build your muscle, build your channeling muscle, psychic muscle, spiritual muscle, meditation muscle. So that's a ma major message. And after their dark period ends, the opportunity to create the new world, become the new world spiritual government. Possibly there will be, how do you say, uh, administrative government, but there will be also spiritual government. So it's like uh, a tribe ch chief and uh, the tribe shaman. So you can become a grid of tribe, tribal shamans, um, yeah, avatars. Avatar, by definition, Sanskrit word is descendant, hmm. someone who descended, someone who descended, uh, God descended, incarnated on earth. So, like Jesus, Buddha, many other gurus, now ascended masters, but then descended masters. So you can become descended master, avatar. Master descended, reincarnated again on earth. There are many of them, the ones who connected to God, the, the gurus in India and in any other country. Uh, enlightened people, saints. Saints, in a way, connected to God, not necessarily saints in behavior, but saints in a way of connection. Um, so that involves three major factors. Reiki, basically energy healing of people and events. Right now, work on people, but then you expand it to events. And also Reiki and yoga allows you to upgrade your chakras in a conscious way and build your spiritual body, spiritual muscle, able to become an avatar, able to get into avatar state, able to... Hold on, just a second. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, I just was thinking maybe there is something wrong. <laughs> Let me see. No, all is good. We are recording. All right. So avatar state. Galactic languages, yes. So galactic languages and channeling come together. So Reiki is exercising the heart chakra and higher chakras and using your hands to heal people and events and for ultimately the society. Um, voice, galactic languages, chanting is a wonderful tool allowing you immediately to connect. It's just instant connection to the spirit. Especially if you charge a certain tone with that intention. So the tone allows you to synchronize because you create that vibration very clear. Um, very clear vibration. It collapses the function, collapses in one simple sign vibration. And it if you charge it with the intention to connect, it allows you to connect to the spirit. So as you practice more and more chanting, Krishna Das is our teacher in chanting. So as you practice more and more in uh, chanting, then it becomes much easier to connect on, on the run. You don't have to sit down. You don't have to get in the quiet space. You bring the tone to yourself. It can be even silent. You can think of it. And it allows you to connect. So uh, Reiki, voice, and meditation. So meditation, uh, one of the key meditations, um, as I understand, is connecting the third eye with your spine. And when you connect third eye with your spine, that is at that spot. I mean, there is like two, two positions really for, for third eye. One is right here, right in the center, maybe a little fr front-wise. And second is right here. It's they have possibly different names, uh, but the people refer to them as third eye anyway. So one is here where in, uh, Hindus put the, that little spot. And uh, direct your mental focus, or you can like actually look there, look, but you can direct your mental focus and m shift your assembly point, assemblage point, assembly point into the third eye right here. You can hold it so it's easier for you to feel where you want to be like all your essence just meditate on it being there and that's one of the easiest ways to lift the energy up assembly point up and connect to the divine on a high level it's like very high level um and then you connect your bottom energy like first chakra so you connect your arc of your foot would be the other connection. So from arc to your, of your foot to the third eye is the connection and then to the temple. So you flip, go in that connection up to the temple, up. And from third eye down, up, down, with whatever frequency you like, whatever is comfortable. So this is a three entry point, temple, third eye, and first chakra. So prepare yourself spiritually, build your spiritual muscle. Um, in terms of preparation, uh, uh, physical, you just kind of do your homework, watch the videos, do your mental work, and realize what it's going to be if it's if it happens, and kind of incorporate in your preparedness. So it's mental preparedness. You you know how to proceed, proceed. You know the history of previous disasters, right? You learn from the from the experience of others. And after you learn it, you don't have to do much. After you realize that I will do that, I will not do that. That's about it. Um, in terms of, you know, packaging stuff, um, you know, buying stocking, stocking stuff. If you have a house and if a house is in suburban area, I think it's a good idea, except the food becomes rotten with time. Like after two years, even rice, even the food doesn't taste as good. So, you know, you would have to eat it, right? Or donate it and others have to eat it. And it's kind of taste doesn't, it's not nutrition value goes way down with, with years of storage. So 
cans, I guess you can store forever, but uh, rice, uh, the mice start getting there and also the uh, flour, you get worms there and then it's really hard to get rid of them. So I wouldn't recommend storing flour unless you really know it's coming. So I think you will have like some time, maybe short time to stock up. So I would have the list, I would know where to go or in which order and then maybe not overdo it, just do a little stock, but not a huge one. Um, what what I would recommend buying is like um, crank radio and crank um, flashlight. That, that, that's cheap. You can order it on Amazon for like 20 bucks. Yeah, that's worth it because if communications go down, that would be like the only way to learn global news. And uh, you really want to know what happens in other states, other countries. So that, that would really help. Uh, other than that, uh, candles, uh, matches, lighters. That's about it. Um, cash. Cash is good because if banks close, you know, that might happen at once, like any day, right? Banks close, never open again. And if they open with new names, no more savings, no more things. So, so storing some some cash really helps because, you know, banks close, people start using cash, whatever is left over. And it doesn't really matter that some have tons and some have little because they will still exchange and it will be like, you need some sort of uh, money to, to function. So uh, if, if there is not enough cash, people come up with a different, um, goods which can be can be used instead of cash like cigarettes alcohol there's tons of others uh medicine yeah i can exchange you know a pack of antibiotics for food right but antibiotics yeah store them in the freezer like you can in the freezer you can store them for 10 years they don't go bad in the freezer so stock up antibiotics order them in uh, in canada online um in uh, over the counter, buy the uh, antibiotic ointment, triple antibiotic ointment, and it's called Athletes Food. Athletes, athletes, maybe it's I don't know. Athletes Food. It's uh, antifungal, uh, uh, antifungal ointment. It's it's very handy in, in in this situation. Very handy, especially if you don't have water to wash. That would be handy. Very handy. And you know, toilet paper is really helpful trash bags <laughs> trash bags water water filters all right uh, but you know there are different lists online and uh, I would say just to have the experience is much more than uh, anything you can read or, or watch so to experience it um, do camping you know camp in your backyard but better camp in a wilderness and really think what you take with you how long it will last and that experience of camping in a wilderness or just plain camping is is invaluable um if you have an option like we do to travel to mexico uh do that just travel to your nearest poor neighborhood and just you know walk on the street and uh, experience it experience walking on the street in dangerous neighborhoods in different times it's safer than what will happen so so that would give you some experience yeah um if things happen uh there is strong you know it really depends how things will work. i think in america you will have um uh, different spots with very different outcomes like different locations would be different like some locations would be complete disaster and some locations would be the opposite um as i said military bases do have enough for maybe 10 years of stocked up everything for 10 years of uh, uh self-sufficiency uh, certainly gasoline and uh, generators and uh, water supply they do have so uh, I, I'm not sure they will share much so there will be maybe towns and layers of uh, fences around the military base so it allows some workers to come 
but um, maybe there'll be layers. Like inside, there'll be old, old life, civilized life, and then outside, there'll be layers of, of fences and um, down, down, and down, and um, it will be hard to get in. But, but uh, that would be one way of, um, of getting some some food and water and, and supplies and getting maybe a job, right? Uh, I'm I'm sure. Sh- you know, and, and usually uh, when things go wrong, there is a lot of demonstrations. People come together to the square plaza and um, talk, and then they kind of demonstrate, you know, go rally in front of the government location. So I don't know how much of that will be in America. Maybe it will happen. But, you know, for the, to demonstrate, you have to have some government. If there is no government, there is no reason to, to make a lot of noise. Um, I would certainly go around and uh, knock on doors and um, uh, organize local local committees, local community, uh, share resources, share uh, work, share uh, knowledge, news, uh, and share basically understand that the main problem in uh, such disasters is not lack of resources. It is depression and fear. People just go mad. Not fully mad, some go fully mad, but others just become so depressed they die from depression. Uh, And as a Reiki healer, you can help there. You can help people just to stay sane. Yeah, staying sane in this situation is the hardest. Like first people get deprived of television. So so if you are a musician, a singer, a theater, um, an actor, then uh, you'll get a job right, right there just to entertain people. When there is no television, uh, Comedians and performance are a demand. It's not a safe job because if you just get a little too much, you'll be robbed frequently. But but that's what is in demand. So you know, grab your guitar and hold on to it, and um, you'll be good. Um, I have one guest, which is nice. Johannes, hi. Hi, Max. How are you? Oh, thank you for joining. You see, I'm talking for already 15 minutes. Uh, my shadow here and me are talking, um, but that's okay. What are you speaking about today? I just joined because I, I found the link, so I'm interested in... Oh, you didn't, oh, that's why you joined, because you didn't know I'm talking about emergency preparedness. I'm talking about economic collapse uh, in five years. Five years is mm-hmm. arbitrary number. Mm-hmm. Are you interested? If you're not, you, you can go, if, if you get bored, yeah, you can go anytime. I, I, I can talk by myself. It's not a big deal. No, I, I've been interested about this since since 10 years back. I think uh, I've been uh-huh. putting my focus a little bit on these these things too. Like I, I've felt that we are peaking towards some, some events that is going to take place for sure that I feel has to take place for for a global change as as a society together like we individuals will change but i mean as a as a global society that, that we know that on the other side of the world we have pretty much the same values and 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 stuff like that so that that is something that i feel is going to occur so when it's going to occur and if you say 5 years then then we look forward to it <laughs> i'm in embracing this change for all of us I don't know. I I wish it was painless. I I really wish it would be painless. In Russia, it was relatively painless. We didn't go to complete uh, shutdown on of city structures. Like we still had water in most of the cities, and those cities which didn't have water, they um they were small enough to handle it. They weren't huge cities. Uh, but yes, yeah, some, some like the worst were uh, the uh, um, big factories which were closed, so they were desolated and people had to leave. So big factory usually had a town near it, so these towns became dead. And such towns like exist in America, but you know, the whole country didn't didn't 
experienced a complete collapse. It was bad, but but kind of under control. So it was nearly bad, but not completely bad. Um, what do you want to? What specifically do you want to talk about? I think it's just uh, I don't have any specifically I want to talk, but it's more like the the feeling within uh, me. I would say personally, and I would say that. I can speak upon this feeling, and and pe other people would would res resonate with it, and it's it's okay. about it's about consequences. It's about mm -hmm. um, that this this you said that you wanted this to be pain pain free and 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 or painless or or less minimally painful. Yeah, and I think a consequence in a sense. It's a perspective, you know. It depends on what what pain is, but um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's really about perspectives. How you would look at it, then, in in what in what way would it be pain? I would ask you then. Yeah, it's a big philosophical question. But I want children to be healthy. I want uh, people to be healthy. I want uh, more love, less violence, less war, for sure. Usually, these big collapses. Are accompanied by wars, local wars, global wars. So I don't want the global war. I don't want local wars. I don't want big crime like, uh, like crime in Mex in all bad times in Mexico, in bad times in Chicago, and bad times in New York. I don't want that. It was. Um, and people were. How do, what was it? Nice word. Um, I know it in Russian. I just don't know this word in English. Um, honorable and kind. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I get your point. Well, I had a thought coming, but but it it sort of disappeared again. But. But uh, yeah, so yeah, now the thought came back. I think that if then there there would be war again, or war because of the consequences, or war is our consequence again, then I think we're we're choosing not for our best again. Then if we were, if there would be wars because of these consequences again, then I still believe that what we do now. Then, if we create more war, then then we are painting up the future and the consequence in our future. To to have, I, I cannot say detail what is going to be for consequences, but I know that within the feeling of 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 karma, then we can't start another war. It would not make sense to where we want to end up with with this um, global issue that. We, <clears throat> that we have that it's unbalanced society and some people have more than others and that we want to naturalize and that's why we're pretty much working with balance and that we want to create that world of, of balance and and i just feel that if war and sickness and stuff like that would start again then i feel maybe we 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 are still doing something I won't. I don't want like to call it wrong because nothing is specially wrong. It's it's just a matter of perspective. But I think if war breaks out again, then then we can just sit back for an, another five years or ten years and wait for for the other wave to occur when we don't create war because of of, of collapses of different kinds. So I would say that if 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 war would occur again, then then. Then we have to wait for another time, you know, until we don't create more wars and settle down more. The energy needs to be balanced for us to get to some kind of agreement, you know. We have to know what we want. And uh, I don't know how it is to lead a country. I, I, I haven't done that in this life. So, oh, what you say? Leave, leave the country, emigrate? That's what you said? No, lead a country to lead to be oh, a leader lead the country. of a country. To to I I don't know that in this life that experience I don't have to lead a country, but it it depend to lead a country. It, it it to me 
we all lead the countries. It's not one person. It cannot ever be one person. But I can say that one person can have a big, great influence on the rest of the world of, of their choices. So uh, let's say that a president of, of Russia, for example, we say Putin, he has a lot of influence over the country and, and all the businesses. And, and he seemed to be a pretty decent guy. I have no idea what he's doing actually but but from just watching him and listening to his energy he he's pretty fair that he he seems to be a fair player you know <laughs> and okay. and fair what do i mean with that i i i think uh, that people suffer from his choices too but i think when it when it comes to it, I think he he's he's he could be a better influence than than an American president. That's that's what I could say. If I should maybe compare presidents, then that's maybe what I am doing right now, to to just add up to this argument. But um, if I would be a leader of a country, then why and what do I do it for? And what do I, what what am I trying to get out of it? And what's the outcome of of my choices? And I think those questions, answers are really important at this time. Why am I doing something and why am I, I mean, in the business industry, you're favorizing people, you're favorizing groups of, of, of people that, or this happens, I've seen it happen in, it still happens in, in, in normal life too, that you, you favorize some like that's kind of a racism in in a sense that you know like i don't like gypsies or i don't like black people that that's kind of i like white people more and so i'm grouping i'm not you know i'm grouping where i want to put my energy into if if i want to invest anything of my energy it's like this grouping so i feel in the business industry it's a lot of these kind of problems that we still have, that we still are trying to be someone in front of groups of people so we can feel better about ourselves. So that's kind of a dangerous mindset if you're in the in uh, leading a country or something. So I would not vote for, for Putin if he's still trying to imp uh, impress groups of people to, to, to feel better about himself. So or any other president i would not i would not like them to be in office if they still are seeking for being the being the the parties uh, you know the parties um the man of the parties I, I know how to say it but it's like that person that everybody wants to talk to or be with or having a dinner with or whatever it's like specialism in some way that some people are more special than others and I think this is what we are struggling with in this world. And this is where I think All right. cooperation let, comes from. Let me reflect a little bit on what you said. Yeah, uh, you raised so many topics and some of them are relevant directly to the collapse and some of them are more like before and after. Yeah. Like, you know, during the collapse, the role of people could be huge or it could be nothing like if you know sometimes you don't you know you don't even uh, the role of government is like non-existent there right if uh, at a certain point like if they have no resources they can't influence things at all um it is i guess the main answer is it is personality versus the system right uh, say Putin has more power because it is Russian structure of the system which is so centralized in America thanks God it is much more decentralized the role of prison is so little because there is so much happening around nobody really knows a single person in control there is no single it's decentralized there is control and some of these groups are so secret we don't know much about them right but but uh more like the president is just public relations person for these groups <laughs> they tell them what to do and uh, the prince have to like uh, 
navigate to satisfy everybody and uh, and still do something. Um, so I guess that's the worst about the, not, there is nothing wrong with decentralization. I think decentralization is a big step from tyranny and totalitarianism to democracy, I would say, to real, uh, real uh, government for people. Uh, when more people are involved in making decisions, there is less chance of poor decision. There is more openness, there is less chance of really nasty decisions, like chemtrails and, and uh, other bad things. Um, so, you know, a normal way of healing that would be bringing it out to the open, explaining to the people, you know, things are on and then fixing them together. But that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen because the system is so disbalanced and unstable that any of the opening of the secrets would immediately cause that economic collapse. So uh, as I understand just the, the aliens and um, their, who is that? Um, as the divine forces, the divine forces which control that matrix, influence that matrix, decided, I think they decided that, all right, without the collapse, nothing happens. Let's do the collapse, expose what happened. People kind of will get some understanding of what was happening. And then after a period of downtime, things can be rebuilt in much more open way. And, uh, I'm really hopeful, like, I really hope for a miracle. I think during the collapse, there will be some four-dimensional upliftment, the wave of ascension. And the key for the ascension is telepathy. So I think during the downtime, we will be able to develop telepathy much stronger and connect to the network of telepaths. And when you have telepaths, you, the deception becomes radically less possible, like impossible. And when there is no deception, then all the system of deception just don't work. And that's what we get in governments. It's layers of deception, layers of deception, which are strengthened by brainwashing. So when there is less deception and no brainwashing, their humanity can recover and heal Hopefully, after the downtime, we won't be. We, we will have no um, very little brainwashing or no brainwashing. Um, there were nice, light, enlightened periods of time, like in Russia after the. It's called perestroika after early nineties, like in ninety four, I think, ninety three, ninety four. There, there was maybe a year or two when good guys came to power. I don't remember exactly the time. I need to look it up in Wikipedia. But my friends, like people who we, who we admired, like real creative geniuses, were invited to lead the country. Like my clo one of now close friends, older close friends, became a minister of culture. She was like maybe a, a minister of culture for a year, but, and now she's again a singer. <laughs> But um, it happened, and there was like a wind of common sense. It was so amazing. Like we still, we we kept like it happened twenty five years. So for the next twenty years, we kept their magazines of that time as as just a, a treasure of common sense. I still have some of them around. Actually, I trashed most of them because they are now available electronically. But but it was just. Wow, it, like that's how the things should be. Like you really discuss important things, not what presidents discuss on their elections, like real important things. They, they go around important things and never touch them. But like important things came up. In uh, America, it was during Kennedy administration, my admired Jim Watson who discovered double helix, he was invited to um, be in, in, in the government in some committee to help administration of the science and defining the direction of the science. 
again it happened maybe for a few weeks and then stopped but there was that period of real common sense real good development um i was really amazed how well things were done in latvia uh, lithuania mostly latvia latvia lithuania latvia estonia it was just again a period when common sense just came out and it was just on open it wasn't muddled by by nonsense as usual so we just had a little bit of kind of preview how it could be how the governing of people could be when a common sense is used so it is possible yes do you want to comment anything I cannot comment right now I'm just listening uh, give me five minutes ten minutes and I will be sure. commenting okay. I'm a little bit busy all right it was nice to hear children's laughter on the background it was wonderful yeah so laughter in the town time still exists love and laughter still exists it actually becomes much more powerful when there is no television no radio singing talking laughter communication becomes real like you you know you guys forgot how it could be when things could just go down you can experience a little bit of that on campgrounds like uh, YMCA campgrounds when people go away from the from the um, uh, television from the civilization back to campgrounds and uh, brought together pushed together people start to communicate like in a colder country a cold colder latitude like in Rochester Chicago uh, northern part of America and Canada uh, if things go wrong it makes absolutely great sense for people to pack together in very tiny in the winter in a very tiny rooms because I think a human person warms up the room correct me if I'm wrong maybe it's about two three depending on the person 300 watts uh, and a, a heater is about three times stronger so three people warm the room up equal to about one heater one kilowatt heater uh, and also it's much more efficient to heat a small room than than uh, than a big room so you, you can spend very little energy to heat up the room you don't need much fuel blah 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 I had experience in the past in <laughs> uh, one of the worst times like I think it was 93 winter of 93 94 um, I realized I need to we need to to leave the country and you know I realized to leave the country you have to go to PhD so I needed a PhD thesis to be certified so I need to write I needed to write it so and my apartment was small and kids were making noise all the time I couldn't really do anything there I couldn't do much there it was like just too much of uh, other problems so I ran away like or ran away, like yeah took my country skis whatever is needed food provisions money and um, I lived in a, a little cottage of our friends they allowed me there we always were welcome to use it and um, and it just happened that it coincided with one of the coldest times in in, uh, in Russia that was really cold luckily the cottage has electricity and and gas pipe and the gas wasn't expensive at that time so I could use as much gas and electricity as I, as I could except you know if you use too much electricity your wires start burning so you, you're like for heating it wasn't practical so I came there and I realized I can and the cottage was like summer summer type so there were holes in the in the wall in the between the wood panels but it was in the uh, pine forest uh, like half an hour walk from the station electric station electric uh, train station and like a couple hours from Moscow wonderful place very spiritual very uh, perfect for concentration so I wrote my dissertation there for uh, maybe 10 days and I finished it and the thesis and uh, the first day what I had to do and you you become flexible in this time especially in Russia but in the difficult times you be, you become very inventive people become inventive 
So I needed to convert it to a, a winter house. So I took my skis and in Russia, I mean, no GPS systems, no reference books. Finding a store, you just by word of mouth. So you have to find someone walking on the street and it was quite a wild place, but found someone on the station that told me where the uh, hardware store is, took a train to the hardware store, uh, found the hours, so got there through the freezing wind. But guess what? A role of polyethylene, the film, big role of film, polyethylene film, uh, you know, the ones which you use for paper, for bread, for bread um, and vegetables. And um, uh, it's equivalent of staple guns. It's like manual, but basically equivalent of staple guns. I think they're called ticks or something. And um, and the smallest room there near the gas stove or how they say gas cooking stove, I sealed all the windows, all the doors with the polyethylene, so there is no air flowing through. And basically, if you turn on the gas, uh, the air still goes through, but there is enough warm air so you can find the area where you can. Uh, leave like normal temperature you and there was like a ladder so you i would sit in the ladder and if it was if you go higher it would be too warm if you go lower it would be too cold and there was also electric fan so it can mix it a little together and sitting on that ladder i wrote my my phd thesis but this was actually one of the most enlightened and happy times in uh, in my life because it was just complete focus complete freedom survival plus uh, enlightened uh, state of being close to science and really thinking about science. And um, between their writing, I would ski around. And you would write and then ski again, around, around, like cross country skiing. And um, there was one more person there. So I would see maybe one, two people also skiing, like even in the hardest time in Russia. There was still people jogging or skiing or um, doing some sort of jogging, skiing stuff. And um, of course, you spend energy, but but you need to stay healthy, basically. I also had a tumor at the time. I didn't know if it was cancer or not, but basically, I needed my family out. And I didn't want to take chances to have the surgery in uh, in Russia. So I wanted just to get it cut out in uh, abroad because in Russia I didn't trust the surgeons and the experience shows that that was correct my my brother trusted them later I think it was operated in uh, 2000 five or six and then he died soon after they 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 did they killed him the surgeon bad surgeon killed him he, he survived for the next three years, but it was just slow dying. He, they, they just removed too much and too sloppy. So, yeah, Russian medicine exists in little pockets, but like countrywide medicine is, is a pretty bad state, unfunded. So, so you know, you, you know, you have a tumor, but you have to run on the skis, be active and uh, stay sane and happy. And I did it. I'm, I mean, it was a miracle, obviously. They, they wanted me to survive. But I didn't give up. I prayed. I offered them my service. I wanted to continue. And I keep, kept myself up and kept my family up and my friends up. So heavy weight lifting, spiritual heavy weight lifting. Um, there are people around who help you to stay sane and happy, sane and normal. They were, they're rare, and when you find them, you cherish them. And they give you invaluable advice, and there's just wise people around. So I still, some of them went, passed away, but I still cherish them. And uh, were friends of my classmates. No, no, parents of my classmates, parents of my classmates parents or friends of my classmates. How about that? Um, 
and this is just because of the past life they just enlightened they just enlightened people and they listen to you they share their own experiences and they keep you sane so if things go wrong build your social circle people will be some people will be more closed but most people will be more open to communicate because they also need help they also need to make network so um you will get lots of free time when you don't have a job you don't have uh, things to do there is lots of free time especially in the dark you know when sun goes down if you don't have much light then you just are by yourself and you can meditate so as you know the future as you know the main goal your main, main scenario uh, meditation is wonderful you're not as lost as others you have that connection um, and you uplift others so you can do Reiki to others you can uplift others you can tell them stories you can consult them you can help others you can organize other people I imagine that there will be some towns which will just be fine you know if local people coordinate the nothing prevents people like settle settlers in uh, beginning of the America nothing prevents people from guarding themselves and creating reasonably prosperous communities there is nothing wrong like the land can feed people uh, there is enough of uh, simple hardware to, to keep things going well, you need like very simple instruments to, to do agriculture and um, if you do it collectively and smart it's possible um, doing agriculture in your backyard I really doubt it is practical from my experience it was always you do agriculture in your backyard but you always have to have some other supplies just this the timing is not perfect and uh, when your food is ripe it, it might get stolen like you really need a community of people and guard your fields and fields should be big enough to to really feed that, that people so optimal size is like a farm and optimal number of people is like number of people in a farm like 20 20 like like in the old days like you know just look in the old days America like 20 few people in a farm and garden your farm and you need some some tools but but uh, it's it's doable actually my time will run out in 11 minutes uh, Johannes do you have anything to add Uh, one thing I wanted to mention when you do Reiki if things go wrong and if you do Reiki uh, one of your jobs assignments <laughs> will be to help people cross over so people will be dying and sometimes you do Reiki to make them better and sometimes you make Reiki to make them better but actually help them peacefully pass over so the process metaphysical process of of dying is uh, the the spirit body has to separate the etheric body the astral body has to separate from the physical body take over the information of the life which is stored very close in the DNA very close to the physical body and take it out repackage it and go into the spirit world and kind of process it in a proper way when the person doesn't know what is happening when they're scared and they're suffering that process is difficult and uh, their spirits on the other side are helping to disconnect helping pers the person to get on the other side but if the person resists if they don't understand what is happening it's it's more difficult so uh, when you do Reiki to a dying person uh, basically you you just hold the space and let them know they're loved connect them to the love of the Creator and uh, intend to hand over the spirit to the spirits on the side and send it to the light to their to the home in the spirit world and 
when the person is dying, basically their soul knows what to do if you tell them what to do. So mentally, telepathically explain the process and send them all send them over. If if you know it's 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 a good it's the right time and and you would know if it's the right time. So if you don't know, just don't do it. But if you know it's the right time, if you have the understanding it's the right time, just help them to die in peace with somebody loving around them. It is essential for their further progression. It could be the major upliftment, the last lesson they learn in this life and of being loved. And that might make the major difference in their whole life story. Um, sometimes it's just sufficient to send them a little impulse of Reiki, and sometimes you have to be there for the whole time. Um, it takes some courage, but it also takes just understanding. When you understand, when you build this spiritual muscle, um, Reiki muscle, it's just, uh, it doesn't, it's not a dr as much of drama anymore, just simple work which you do, the service you do. Like doctors, who work in hospitals and see dying people all the time. It's just the work needed, and you just do what you're supposed to do. It's it's not, not much more than that. The tragedy of death is very 3D. So when you're higher, you understand it is all illusion, and you just keep the illusion in high vibration. You keep everybody in high vibration. Uplift, heavy lift, you lift it up, you smile, you send love, you become the channel of God. That's that's the main message. Johannes, do you have anything to add? I'm just listening to what you're saying now, and I just agreeing with with the whole passing it to the other side, kind of breaking the fear, um, all that what we can accumulate in this life to secure that journey to the other side for for first of us uh, and then we can help others but i believe to have to find the trust the love and the care that we actually do have uh, is very important to 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 share this message while we're here in this 3d world because we are here for that to find the self-love that we come back so uh, so often to this place to 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 find out that we we still maybe didn't say those words that we wanted to say so badly before we left this place so we came back to uh, give ourselves another try to say those things that you always wanted to have said before you leave this place which is to me is is a lot about self love <laughs> self love <laughs> means the love for for yourself and uh, automatically it becomes a love for others so it's a, it's a plus there if uh, you don't have to focus so much on finding love for others it's more of the focus to to love yourself and to find what it is that you love about yourself and to really from your heart center from from a calm state of mind to to um, to create this uh, feeling and to feed feed off this feeling and when you can do this you can also share this feeling and it will be felt from others who has fear uh, fears about death for example passing uh, on to some to some other place where it's still very unknown to many people here what that place may or may not be um, so again finding the love sharing the love will make this transformation more comfortable for us all and uh, this is our mission here to make it more comfortable thank you yeah helping others is actually what we, what will keep you going if again if the things happen like that helping others like my my one of my close friends in Russia, when the first earthquake happened, like it was quiet, 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 quiet. And then the country started shaking and surprise, the earthquake happened. It just was so synchronized. When the people's minds shift, the, the earth starts trembling. Um, he immediately bought the ticket, went there, 
to help the um, so how, how do you call it rescue rescue workers um, he became part of their team and did something I'm not sure how efficient he was because he's so loving people and so upset when things happen bad so I'm not sure he was strong enough to really be useful but at least the sentiment I was proud that he just used his own money go and help so if now the earthquakes happen if the disaster happen and if you have that capacity of going there I think you just can stand up and say you know I need that money to buy a ticket and maybe some gear I think it will be pretty easy to collect the money to send you right away like Facebook is one of the best ways to collect you know human colony would be another one so practice that before before the major collapse if it happens there almost certainly will be smaller quakes earthquakes nature quakes economical quakes other disasters even whatever it happens you know I don't want to continue the list but some sort of disaster so there will be opportunity to go and help in these times I'm not sure you'll be allowed actually to go as a freelance <laughs> but you might find a structure which will, will incorporate your help sometimes you need like an ID or something because they don't want uh, how to call people who collect valuables scavengers they don't want scavengers to um, forage yeah the to I think it's called for a for for I forgot the word um, so um yeah yeah there is lots of houses abandoned in the disaster so going through the houses you will see the corpses and you might want to bury them but then you know going there back and picking up the tools which you need like antibiotics and stuff and being careful because if there is no medical service you don't want to break a leg or something like being really careful you know really cautious like you on one hand you have to be inventive like really 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 inventive all the time that is not possible let's go around and use some other way but at the same same time not taking too big risks so you know stay healthy stay don't jump like walk be cautious because there is no surgeon or surgery around no hospital to fix you uh, during the war Second World War a, sh a strange thing happened um, there was no infectious diseases people didn't get sick for the time of the war and you can explain it with some 3d rational explanations but I think it's just su supernatural I think the spirits of the disease are so busy doing the war that they are not working to make the disease something like that so people didn't get sick for the whole period of that they could be dying from hunger but I don't think even that happened people didn't die from hunger people they did died more from hunger during the bad years before the war, 1933 was the year when lots of people died from hunger, like many thousands. But uh, during the war, it was something else. Uh, you will be guided, you know, if you're hungry, you will be guided to help someone who has food, something like that. Uh, yeah, you, you know, walking and asking for help and offering your help is just fine. Begging is fine. You know I don't know many people would would not beg or not ask for help but I think it is fine especially if you can offer something in exchange like one of my relatives my one of my main teachers uh, at certain point she chose to stop being employed and her employment was in uh, the atom bomb project in in Russia so she left the job as soon as she could and then she didn't have salary so she went to different relatives and helped them with their housework and all there was all these tons of housework and she was very helpful like cleaning 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 watching kids things like that uh, 
your relatives would be one of your major stops. Like some of them might help you, you might help them. Forming communes, forming their groups of people where you live together, guard your stuff together. You would you would need lots of guards and fences, like building fences, building uh, toilets in the, in the backyard. Uh, one of the jobs which was all this in Russia, you you can one of the walking jobs, like I don't peddlers, they call peddlers. Right? There will be a market, peddlers, all that old stuff. But one of the jobs there, or oh, professions, a knife sharpener, always useful. Like if so, if the you know if there is no electricity, no ways to sharp knives, so you walk on the streets and offer sharpen, sharpening knives, you sharpen the knives with manual, like food food driven machine, which you can assemble. And then people give you in exchange some you know, food or whatever they have, uh, means of exchange. So um, like in old times, most of the world, 3 billion people I think live in, still in that, in that kind of world. So just traveling and watching them, can ex you can experience it right now, or just watching it on YouTube and reading books about watching videos. Um, so it's only civilized world, which we forgot how it is. Again, as I said, um, it looks like now we live in the gold golden age of the humanity, the, the most pros prosperous, most uh, wasteful uh, time with highest population. Um, again, let's let's pray that it goes that change goes in the most peaceful way in the most healthy way and <sighs> smile and keep it up stay sane stay enlightened enlighten others and after it ends you will hold the grid of higher vibration it will help build in the new humanity. Now it is two minutes as when this webinar has started. So to find it, go on humancalling.org and uh, click on when this link and you should be get able to get there. Oh, and I have two viewers. Thank you for viewing. Yay. And um, uh, we accept donations. If I have more donations, I can uh, invite more of Jim in times between Saturday webinars. But, uh, Jim is working doing channeling and Reiki work, so if I can pay him for his time, he would join and do more free webinars for, for everybody. Um, and I invite more people to do interviews and uh, help me with button pushing. So right now I'm doing button pushing, but if there is more Activity during the webinar, we need someone to push the buttons and prepare for the webinar and mute participants, something of that sort. Send me questions for future, especially regarding that topic of uh, emergency preparedness. Send me questions by email max at humancalling.org. Max at humancalling.org. Send me questions so I can answer your questions in my next broadcasts. And thank you, my viewers, and thank you, Johannes. Uh, I think we are done. I bless you all. Thank you, Max, for your movement also. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Allah <laughs> Alana All right goodbye everybody